Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and I just returned from New York from Samsung Unpacked. I had a chance to take a nice in-depth look at the Galaxy Note 7, and I want to share that with you all. This event was really nice. I got to see a lot of really great people, and also I had the chance to sit in the very front row, which is like never. So right after the event, I got to spring up and touch the devices first. So let's take a look at the Note 7 in all its glory, shall we? On the left-hand side, you have an infrared light for the iris scanner. On the right-hand side, you have a dedicated camera just to recognize your irises alongside a 5-megapixel front-facing camera. Then along the bottom, we have our fingerprint sensor and home button and our capacitive keys. Did I mention that this device has Gorilla Glass 5? I'm really going to be curious to check that out. There's a nice subtle curve on this, and I wasn't too disturbed by it. So on the left-hand side, you have those two volume buttons. Then on the right-hand side is the power button. Taking a look at the back, we have the 12 megapixel camera, same as on the Galaxy S7. You have your LED flash and also your sensor for S Health. Just like last year, this device has fast inductive charging and it has a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, so 100 milliamp hours less than the Galaxy S7 Edge. Taking a look along the bottom, we have a USB-C port now. They are also going to include an adapter in the box. You have fast charging, you also have your headphone jack, you've got a microphone, and your speaker. And of course, you have your S Pen. And before I forget, we also have an SD card slot that can support up to 256 gigabytes. And there's 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. So happy about that. Now taking a look at the S Pen, this is a thinner tip than last year. The reason being is so that it can be more precise and more sensitive to pressure. We're going from 1.6 millimeters down to 0.7. So I'm going to be interested to see how well I can draw with this thing now. For those of you who are wondering, yes, Samsung has listened. You can no longer insert the S Pen backwards. Thank you to Dom for pointing that out. He seemed very jolly. Yeah, the clicky top is just a little bit wider. So. Yeah, it's a little wider. That way you can't. By the way, the Galaxy Note 7 is IP68 water resistant, so it can go down to 1.5 meters for a half hour. But the other thing is that the S Pen can work underwater as well. You're probably thinking, yeah, that's cool and all, but why would I take my S Pen in water anyway? Well, I figure if I'm washing dishes and I need to write something down, like something like soap, I need more soap. If my hands are wet, I can get the screen wet and the pen will still work no problem. Although if you put the screen underneath water, touching it with your finger won't work, but the S Pen does. So now moving on, let's take a look at all the colors that we have here. So starting from left to right, you've got platinum gold, titanium silver, coral blue, that's the new one, and then you've also got black onyx, my personal favorite. The thing to note about the coral blue one is that you can see that the frame is a gold color instead of being silver, and the black onyx one is actually a black frame instead of being silver. I really like that. Now moving on to talking about the size of this device, I was a little bit nervous because I really don't want a phone that's bigger than the Galaxy S7 Edge. I thought that was the perfect size phone. So I was really happy to see that it's pretty much the same size as the Galaxy S7 Edge, just a little bit taller. So I don't think this is going to be really cumbersome for me to use. I'm impressed. This thing feels like it's all screen. And I would say that it is even more comfortable to hold than the Galaxy S7 Edge, so that's a real plus. I found that the Black Onyx Note 7 looks quite similar to the Galaxy S7 Edge, especially mine, so it was funny that people kept grabbing my S7 Edge off the table thinking that it was a Note. Sorry guys. I really like how this Note feels in the hand. I think it's the best feeling Note that I've held so far. It's a large device, but in hand it really does not feel like it. Moving on to the iris scanner, I had plenty of time to play around with it. I think that it's cool, it has a lot of potential, but it also wasn't very comfortable for me to use personally. What I found was that the LED sensor shining into my eyes really wasn't very pleasant. Anyway, they give you a couple of pointers for when you're setting it up. They tell you if you wear glasses or contacts, it may not work as well. You need to hold it 10 to 14 inches away from your face, well, because you have that light shining in your eyes. And you can only program one set of irises at a time, so you're not going to be able to share this. And in my experience, no, it does not make a mistake and think that somebody else is you. 
So provided you're holding it correctly up to your face, it actually is pretty quick, less than a second to unlock. And yes, whether you have the iris scanner feature set up or not, you're still able to use the fingerprint sensor. So it's an either or scenario. Features, let's get into new software features. One I really like is called pinned memos. So you're able to keep a pinned screen off memo thanks to always on display on the display for an hour. So you can be reminded to do what you need to do. So how do you get this going? Well, just take out the pen and just like last year when the display is off, you can take a note, but then you can also pin that note. So it will be always on, you're always on display. So anytime you pick up your phone, it'll be there. Also, right from always on display, you can minimize your little note so people can't see it. You can also double click it again in order to pop it back up and you can trash it right from that same display all at the same time. So that's really handy. And where would we be without a new suite of S Pen features? So first we're looking at magnify. So if you're somebody who can't really see very well or text is too small, you can magnify up to 300%. All it takes is just moving your S Pen over the display. Then you're also able to change the percentage of magnification as well. We've also got a feature that's called glance, which helps augment the device's multitasking abilities. But you need to use this always with the S Pen. It won't work with just your finger. So essentially, it allows you to peek into minimized applications that are running in the background. You can even interact with the app that you are glancing at, but as soon as you take the pen away, it goes right back downward to being minimized. The great thing is that this works with all applications. There is no app this will not work with. Essentially, Samsung really wants you to keep the S Pen in your hand and to continue to use it well after that honeymoon period wears off. The last feature is called translate. So essentially, if you hover the S Pen over a word, it will translate it into the language of your choice, which I find really nifty. I just wish you didn't need the S Pen in order to do this. Another nifty feature that is found underneath Smart Select allows you to create an animated GIF. So just say that you go into a video of some kind, you can record 15 seconds, you can record high quality if you want, and then you stop it. Once you hit stop, you have a couple of options. You can share it, or you can even draw on the new GIF as well. So you can say, la la la, I like it. I don't know. Then you can save or share it. That's awesome, all built right in. If you don't wanna do anything with it at the moment, it will be saved right underneath its own animated GIF folder. And now for all of you artists out there, Samsung has included two new pen tools. You have a watercolor pen tool and an oil pen tool. So you can mix new colors, you can create depth in your paintings. They just want you to treat it like a canvas. So we'll see. Personally, I've always found the note display, even at 5.7 inches, to be just too small to really enjoy drawing on or painting. But I surely appreciate the step forward. Samsung is also trying to push forward by introducing the ability to display HDR content on a mobile device. The idea here is to stream content that really pops and they will be partnering with Amazon to provide this streamed HDR content. They're essentially doing this with their MDNIE chip, the Mobile Digital Natural Image Engine chip, which they've had as far as long as I can remember. It essentially controls how the display looks. It can apply your calibration profiles like the basic mode, adaptive display mode. It tweaks how the image looks. So this chip is going to be handling the HDR content and we'll see if it looks any good. I can't say anything yet. I'm hopeful. Now let's move on to talking about the user interface and user experience. We have Android 6.0.1. So this is not NuGet. As far as when we will see NuGet, your guess is as good as mine. It's gonna depend on your carrier, especially. Samsung made a big deal about the refined user experience, talking about softened colors, and also they've made their icons uniformly rounded. And I have to say that I think that it looks quite nice. I think that TouchWiz is becoming less obtrusive than ever. I really like that they made the toggle shade more useful. So right underneath the shade, I don't have to leave it. I've got more access to settings than we've ever got before. So I can play around with the blue light filter and I can change the temperature all without leaving this toggle shade. On any of these options that you see a little carrot, you can pull up more options. So underneath flashlight, you can even control the brightness. It's really a clean step in the right direction. Even settings looks cleaner and less annoying than I've seen it previously. They have flattened the interface. They've gotten rid of those annoying colored circles and instead you've got sort of softer 
looking colored icons, and I'm not minding those as much. It's not a huge vomit on AOSP like it used to be. They've even continued this simplified user interface underneath the camera. So now to switch between cameras to front and back, all you have to do is swipe. I think that's very intuitive, very simple. Less buttons is always better. Also, you can swipe to get to various filters. You don't have to push buttons for that anymore. Swipe again and you can get to your different camera modes. So I think this is brilliant. I think this is the most simple camera that they've had so far. If you are curious about the pro mode, it looks just like it did on the Galaxy S6. You've got autofocus, white balance, you can choose your filters, exposure compensation, up to 10 second exposure time, and also you've got your control for the ISO as well. The only new setting that I was able to point out underneath camera is called shape correction. So if you take a selfie, for example, or there's some lens distortion, it's supposed to help fix your face. Taking pictures one-handed worked just fine, and I didn't have any issues with my fingers interacting with the sides of the display. This was a pretty big problem last year when I was reviewing the Galaxy Note 5. My fingers would interact with the side of the display, and then I couldn't take a picture. Now you can clearly see he's got his hands wrapped around the display, and it's got no issues with palm rejection whatsoever. Now, let's not forget that this is an Edge device. These days, you now have all the Edge features that you had from the S7, and now there are 64 Edge panels that you can download. There were only several before, and now you've got 64, so hopefully this will become more useful because I poked around with this setting, didn't find it really useful on my S7 Edge, and then just completely forgot about it. So hopefully that'll change here. Otherwise, when digging around, I found standard features like reducing display size for one-handed use, pop-up window features for multitasking, and display modes to control how your display looks. But then I found something new and I was pretty excited. There are a lot of new customizable power saving features. We no longer have ultra power saving mode, but now you can actually change your screen's resolution around the interface from full HD down to even 720p. That's awesome. I tested it and it works. Here I have Chrome fired up and I can tell that it's only being rendered at 720p. So cool. There are preset power saving options such as mid and max. You can see you can limit maximum brightness, change your screen resolution, limit your device's performance and prevent background network. You're free to mess with all of these options as you see fit. The last thing that I found was called Secure Folder. It's a security feature and I went completely bananas over it. Basically, you go through a little tutorial and you're able to completely protect your data. You can lock down your apps or even use a different account for the same app. So imagine having a completely invisible Gmail account unless you go underneath this Secure Folder application and then it shows up. Otherwise, you could say, what Gmail account? You can protect all these Samsung apps that you see here, or any third-party app as well. It all works. Of course, you can save your pictures to Secure Folder as well. Now, as the event was ending and I had to put my beloved new friend down, I found some cool accessories. On display, they had what they called the Backpack, which was a 3100 milliamp hour back battery pack that charged the phone by inductive charging and is also water resistant. They tell me that it works through the inductive quick charging, so that's interesting to hear. We've also got the S-View standing cover, so now you're able to use your S-View case to nicely incline the device so you can watch content. And the plain old LED view cover. Then you've also got the inductive charger and the keyboard attachment, so if you want to treat it like a Blackberry, you certainly can. And of course, the new Gear VR gets an honorable mention. It looks black to me, but they claim that it's a really dark blue. So this should be for all future models of USB-C phones. So for now, this is all there is until I can get a review unit, which I will get and I will do an in-depth review. I think that this is a gorgeous phone that feels really nice in the hand. It's not going to be the crazy thing that some people are expecting. It certainly has a better form factor over the Galaxy Note 5. There's waterproofing, it's got a bigger battery, USB-C, there's an iris scanner, better camera, better processors, better, more responsive S Pen, and it's more precise. You've got Samsung Pay. The rest is an awesome suite of software features, but I'm actually really happy with it after playing with it myself for a couple of hours. So having shown you guys all this, please let me know what you think. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. 
Do you want this phone or are you going to stick with your Galaxy Note 5? Or maybe you want something else entirely. Let me know and have a good night.